Swayze, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcement. Southern as Maisie. Here, I'm Maisie, like the fellow said, Maisie Revere from Brooklyn. At present, I'm working in a coast fishing town as a taxi dancer in a diamond struggle joint. Being a taxi dancer is tough work. You're on your feet half the night, and the customers are on them the other half. And working nights like we girls do, we never have no time to read smart books and grab us a little culture. That's why we taxi dancers decided to form a book reading club since we were all thirsting after knowledge. I was elected president and treasurer since I was the thirstiest. And besides, I thought up the idea. This afternoon is our weekly meeting in the dance hall, which the owner kindly allowed us to use after we threatened to walk out on him. Oh, uh, you pardon me now. I gotta call the meeting to order. Ladies, come to order, please. Come to order, please, ladies. Ladies. Shut up. Oh, well, now that's better. Ladies, I hereby call to order this meeting of the Hotchup Dance Palace Girls Book Reading and Culture of All Kinds Club. Will the secretary please read the minutes of the previous meeting? Ruby, Mm -hmm. stop soaking your feet in that basin and read the minutes. Oh, yes, Maisie. I mean, President. Uh, The last meeting of our club was called for 2 o'clock sharp, and at 4.30 everybody was here except Bubbles Riley, who had a slight disagreement with her boyfriend and had to be taken to the hospital. Mm Mm-hmm. And, ladies, I am glad to report that we sent one of our books to Bubbles in the hospital. And she read it from cover to cover, which is quite hard to do using only one eye. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Well, you may continue, Ruby. Uh, we decided we should have a guest speaker at our next meeting, and we all agreed that the guest speaker should be District Attorney Newberry because he's the only one we could get to come. Uh, District Attorney Newberry. Hey, thank uh, you. <laughs> Ladies, I'm honored to have been asked to address... Oh, well, this. not yet, Mr. Newberry. First, I've got to give the report on the book. Well, uh, Mr. President, I'm a very busy man. Oh, and sit I'm... down already. Yeah, uh, sit down, sit down. Come on, uh, Maisie, how was the book? Was it, um, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Girls, if you read that book, it would shock you. You promised, Maisie? Oh, I mean, that, that, oh, heavens. And it should absolutely not be bought by our club. Ladies, that book is everything the report said it was. Are you sure, Maisie? Well, sure, I'm sure. I read it three times. Would you believe it? On the very first page. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, Miss Revere, please, are you forgetting that I'm here? Oh, sorry, Mr. Newberry. Girls, I'll tell you all about it when there's no men present. Uh, No, no, I I mean, I've got work to do downtown. My speech, remember? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, Ladies, since we should all know what's going on in this town, because being civic-minded is cultural like anything, I have invited for our guest speaker none other than the district attorney of our fair city, Mr. George Newberry, who will tell us some things that we should know while we're waiting for the refreshments. Mr. George Newberry. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Ladies, I don't want to waste much of your time. Oh, waste Uh, as much of it as you like, Mr. Newberry. Nobody's leaving until the coffee and sandwiches. That's nice. Uh, Ladies, I... Shirley, please do not whisper while our speaker is talking. That is very lousy manners. Uh, Yes, uh, lousy. Uh, Ladies, I... I'm sorry, Maisie, Your Honor. I was just telling Frosty here the scandal about Dixie LaRue. Uh, uh, ladies, I should like to discuss the topic of crime in our fair city. What scandal about Dixie? Uh, to well, abolish crime, I think that all offenders who have ever been convicted of a crime ain't should you heard, be... Maisie? She's been running around with that married fellow. Uh, 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 every offender who has been convicted... You mean Nick Norton, Shirley, uh, that they're masseur? Oh, well... Uh, every convicted criminal of a crime, no matter... Well, I never liked that, Miss Surrey. Always rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, Say, Cheryl, 
What does his wife say? Well, I know I shouldn't say uh, that, but Miss you Revere, know, Miss Revere, know. do you want to listen to what I have to say, or would you rather hear a lot of gossip? Oh, do you know any, Mr. Newberry? You know, and ladies, the convict in our city is a menace. They have stolen from our honor city, and I collected all the dues. I mean, the, the, many of the criminals were released from prison, and we made the mistake of oh, accepting... Oh, Ruby, it's uh, almost three o'clock. Yes, I'll have to rush uh, home and get the rest of the club uh, made, made the mistake of accepting them in And then hurry uh, down to the bank uh, before it closes. Uh, meeting adjourned, meeting adjourned. Uh, Thanks very much for addressing our club, Mr. Newberry. <laughs> Eighty-five, ninety, ninety-five a dollar. Hmm. Everybody paid their dues this week. Phew. Nine bucks and twenty-six cents. Hmm. Not bad for only two months. Say, mister, the dancing don't start till nine. And what's the idea of coming in the dressing room without knocking? All right, lady, this is a stick-up. Oh, that's no excuse. Us girls might have been getting dressed. A stick-up? Hand it over. Hand what over? You know. Well, how can I? This is the first time I was ever sticked up. The money, babe. That stuff in your hand. Come on, give. Oh, but I can't give you this. It's the club's dues, and we need it to buy books. So do I, miss. What do you need to buy books? Can't you steal them? Now, look, lady, don't mix me up. I'm new in this racket. Now, come on, hand that over. Answer that, miss, but no tricks. Uh, Yes, Mr. Cook. Hello? Hello? Take the receiver off the hook first. Oh, yeah. I was kind of surprised when I got no answer. Uh, <clears throat> hello? Hello? This is me to- to- talking. Oh, hello, Ruby. I was looking through the help on it at. I'm warning you, miss. Cut that out and act like nothing happened. Act natural, like you're carefree and gay. Uh, y- y- yes, c- c- carefree and gay. <laughs> oh, um, hello, Ruby. <laughs> I'm glad you called. I'm happy and gay. Hang up and give me that dough. Give you the dough? Well, I have half a mind to call the police. Goodbye. Who was that? The wrong number. Enough of that stalling, lady. Now hand over the money and I'll scram. What? Well, just a measly nine bucks and 26 cents. Well, you ain't going to get very far in the hold-up business, mister, if you're going to work that cheap. Okay, okay. So I'm not ambitious. Nine bucks will get me enough to eat for a couple of days. Yeah, but what about after that? Why, you'll be so weak from hunger by the end of the week, you won't even have strength enough to hold a gun. Now, I just happen to have some money around here that I've been saving for an emergency like this. Oh, you... You've got more. Mm -hmm. All right, hand it over. Oh, now you're using your head. Let's see now. Where did I put that money? Um, it's not in the drawer. It's not behind the mirror. No, it ain't in the top of the stocking and not in my shoe. Never mind, miss. I can't hang around here any longer. You've been 20 minutes trying to locate that dough. Well, don't be impatient, Mr. Cook. It must be around here somewhere. Now, where did I put it? Look, miss, why don't you look for the dough in your bag, huh? Oh, I'm saving that for last. Yeah, give me that bag. Oh. Yeah. Uh, fine haul. Another 30 cents. Oh. You expected more, maybe? I sure did. I thought there'd be at least 50 bucks in there. And don't you think you don't deserve that much? You put in a full 20 minutes on this holdup. And during the day, too, when all the other cooks are sleeping. Yeah. Measly 30 cents. Oh. And you expected 50 bucks. Um. <clears throat> You got a pen, Mr. Crook? Hmm? A pen? What for? Well, I'll write you a check for the difference. Uh, how do you spell your name? Oh, it's it's Johnson. J O H E U. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I doing? The cops. So long, lady. I'm sorry about taking your dough. Gosh. Funny thing, though. I hope you don't get caught. He's really a nice fellow. <laughs> Wasn't he? Hey, Miss Revere, I'm sorry to have inconvenienced you, but I asked you here to my office to identify the prisoner. Well, gosh, Mr. Newberry, I can't stand looking at dead men. Do you mind if I look at him with my eyes closed? Uh, Miss Revere, the man who robbed you is not dead. He wasn't even wounded. 
Bring in the prisoner, officer. Oh, gee, he's alive. I'm so glad. Okay, I'm here, D.A. Let's get this over with quick. Well, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Johnson. Hey, Miss Revere, this is the man who robbed you, Harry Johnson. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Johnson? I'm glad you're not dead. When you're an ex-con lady in this state, you're always dead. Well, go ahead. Identify me, miss. They're getting a cell ready for me anyway. Well, gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. If you really needed money bad, our club, we do charity. Ah, then this is the man. Well, good. And that'll be all, Miss Revere. The trial will be next Thursday. And, Miss Revere, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. What heart? All right, never mind the wisecracks, Johnson. I'll be back in a moment. Gee, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Johnson. Can I do anything to help when you're in jail? Maybe bake a cake for your birthday and put a file in it? Oh, what's the use, miss? Once a crook, always a crook. But you didn't have to go back to being a crook. There are other jobs in the world. Lady, I'm a crook. So happens that very few people are hiring ex-cons this year. It isn't fashionable anymore. Well, you you mean if somebody gave you a job working days? I mean, I mean uh, you take it? Oh, just try me, lady. I mean, after the court tries me. <laughs> You'll pardon a small joke. When you get through testifying against me, I'll have a steady job, all right. Making little ones, not a big one. Oh, but, but if I didn't, if I don't testify... Yeah, uh, think, girly, think. Little girls who tell lies don't go to heaven when they die. Oh, Mr. Johnson, I'm not going to heaven. What do you mean? I ain't saying, but where I'm going, even John L. Lewis can't pull out the coal miners. <laughs> Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. against the prisoner, Harry Johnson, to the stand. Uh, will Miss Maisie Revere please come forward? Coming, mister. Hold my gum, Ruby. Oh, sure, Maisie, but don't be a schmo and stick your neck out to say that ex-con. Well, I got to, Ruby. Well, so long. I'll be seeing you. Yeah, but only on visitor's day. <whistles> hey, gentlemen of the jury, please, remember you are in the court of... Uh, <laughs> Sit right down here, Miss Revere. Uh, thank you, Judge. Uh, do you mind if I cross my leg? Well, please do, honey. I mean, <clears throat> uh, you may start, Mr. District Attorney. Uh, thank you. Uh, Miss Revere, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Um, must I, Judgey Wudgey? Well, Miss, if you rather not, uh, certainly you must tell the truth. Miss Revere, if you don't tell the truth, you yourself can go to jail. Okay, don't howl. I got good ears. I'll say, and the rest of you ain't bad. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Continue, Mr. Newberry. Hey, very well. Miss Revere, is it true that just one week ago, you were robbed and threatened with a gun by a man who was desperate enough to kill? I object. The prisoner can't object. He can so, too, can't he, Judgey Budgie? Well, according to the law... I'm uh, not doing anything tonight, Judgey. Objection sustained. Damn. <laughs> yeah, just because I don't have a lawyer. <laughs> if the prisoner does not refrain from showing his contempt for this court, you shall have to leave. Gladly. So long, Judge. So long, Maisie. Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. Take care of yourself. Yes, and I... <laughs> Sit down, Johnson. You can't leave. You're the prisoner. Yes. Now, Miss Revere, on the night mentioned, you were robbed of a certain sum of money. Look around, Miss Revere. Do you recognize the man that did it? What man? I don't have very good eyesight, you know. That man sitting by the table. What table? The one at the far end of the room. What room? Your Honor, if this woman can't see, how can she identify it? So do I. It ain't nice manners to interrupt a person when he's speaking. Is it, Judge? Why, no. Emily Poe said, Miss Revere, this is a court of law. Yeah, and the judge doesn't know or care about manners. Hey, that's right. I, I, I what? Uh, yes, uh, Miss Revere. And I object to you wasting the court's time. All I want you to do is to identify the prisoner. What prisoner? 
Let's not go through that again. Here, Johnson, come right up here to the witness stand. Now, Miss Revere, did you ever see this man before? Yes. Good. Now, think. When did you see him before? Just a second ago. He was sitting over there. I object. Well, sure. Wait a minute. What are you objecting to? How do I know? I ain't a lawyer. Your Honor, I object to these obvious attempts to confuse the issue at stake. He's hollering again, Judge. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Newberry, continue with your questioning and let us try our darndest to control our nasty temper, shall we? I'll give it my all, Your Honor. Indeedy, deedy, do I shall. Oh, let's get on with the case. I got a date this afternoon. I'm afraid your date will have to wait. About 20 years. You want a bet? I'll bet you nine dollars and twenty six cents. Ah, that's chicken feed. Maybe so, but that's all the money he stole. I mean, uh, uh what was your question, Mister B. A. Miss Revere, upon your testimony and your testimony alone depends the conviction or release of the prisoner. Now, Miss Revere, look at the prisoner. I am. He's got such an honest face. Thank you, Miss. Miss Revere, is this man guilty or not guilty? Oh, that's a silly thing to ask. Silly, my dear? Well, how can I tell if he's guilty or not until I've heard the evidence? Well, that's right, Newberry. I, how can she know it is? <coughs> Miss Revere, this has gone far enough. That's what I say. Give me that gavel, Your Honor. Oh, sure. Here. <coughs> Case dismissed. Court adjourned. Yeah, but the trial isn't over yet. Why not? You don't have any witnesses against me? That's right. I'm the only one who knows he did it, and I don't even recognize it. <laughs> She's got you there. <laughs> Very well, Miss Revere. I'm sure I have no idea what caused you to refute what you told me, but the prisoner is free. Yeah. Now I can starve to death an honest man. Oh, don't worry, Harry. We'll find your job. Now, you'd better, Miss Revere. This man is a parole convict, and if he doesn't get work, you'll be back in prison sooner or later. Once a convict, always a convict. That $9.26 can't last very long, you know. Oh, I don't know. I'm very thrifty. See, I knew he had some good points. And, Miss Revere, when Johnson goes back to prison, he's going to crack about you. And you know what you'll get for perjury. Oh, Mr. District Attorney, do you think your threats scare me? Do you think anything you said has worried me even the tiniest little bit? Frankly, I don't. Hmm. Silly boy. <laughs> Give us some kind of hint, Harry. There must be some kind of work you can do besides holding up people. Maybe farm work, huh? Hey, can you milk a cow? No. I wouldn't even know which faucet was for the cream and which was for the milk. Well, you could learn. Oh, no. I'm, I'm too nervous for that kind of work. Oh, too bad. You do need a steady hand to squirt the milk into them bottles. Yeah, the openings are too small. Well, look, di didn't you learn a trade or something in prison? No. All I ever did there was walk. Up and down. Up and down. Oh, that's no good. We got enough pickets now. Say, here's an ad in the paper. A wanted, experienced English-type butler. Steady employment for the right man. Salary, no object. Apply, Mrs. Pruitt. Steady, huh? Uh, Harry, you ever buttled? Well, sort of, in jail. <laughs> Every day at five o'clock, I used to serve afternoon bread and water. Well, get your hat, Harry. We're going down to Mrs. Pruitt's and sew up that butler's job. Are you kidding? Nobody hires ex-cons. Well, Mrs. Pruitt don't know you did time, And you'll never be able to tell. Uh, you could act like an English butler, can't you? Oh, definitely, madam. Don't you snow? <laughs> Shall we be off to Mrs. Pruitt? Yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> No, Harry, don't put your hand on my shoulder when we walk. Mrs. Pruitt must know you were in jail. Say, Maisie, how about references? Harry will have to have worked for real classy people to get that job. Yeah, she'll want written references. Yeah, and he's going to get them. Signed by Mrs. Astor, Mrs. Vanderbilt, and Mrs. Cabot. That's nice. Why not get one signed by Countess Pignatelli? Oh, don't be silly, Harry. I can't spell Pignatelli. Ruby, pen and paper, please. <laughs> Reference are very flattering, Johnson. Very flattering. Thank you, Mrs. Pruitt. But the stationery that Mrs. Vanderbilt used, does she usually write her letters of recommendation on the uh, back of a paper bag? Uh, oh, well, that's all we could find. 
What? Oh, well, she means all Mrs. Vanderbilt could find was fault with Johnson. That's why we insisted that he leave her employed. Oh, quite, Mrs. Pruitt. And I always listen to the advice of my agents. Remarkable, remarkable. I never knew that butlers have agents handling their affairs. Well, only butlers who have worked for such fine families, Mrs. Pruitt. Johnson here has worked three years at the Vanderbilts, two years at the Cabot. Uh, five years at Danimora. Danimora? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, certainly you've heard of the very exclusive Mora family. Well, uh, Johnson here worked for the eldest son, Danny Mora. Oh, really? <laughs> five years at one place. That's quite a record, Johnson. Yes. Haven't I? Well, Johnson, I must be very careful whom I employ. You see, I have some very valuable jewelry in my home. Oh, well, Johnson's very honest, Mrs. Pruitt. He never stole any jewelry in his life. And all I ask is a chance. Uh, to, to make good, I mean. Well, Johnson, I'm expecting guests for dinner, and I shall give you a trial. If you live up to your references, I shall hire you on a permanent basis. Oh, well, swell. And, Johnson, for dinner tonight, I should like to... And no matter where you hide it, Johnson will find uh, it. And, and just to make sure that everything goes all right, Mrs. Pruitt, I'll stay for dinner. Stay for dinner? Oh, Miss Revere, I should like to ask you... I to... don't know, Mrs. Pruitt. What, what are you going to have? <laughs> Hiya, Harry. Butch, how did you know I was working here? Oh, we always make an effort to see how the members of our mob are coming along. Since you've been in stir, Harry, we put in a research department. Now, look, look, Butch, I'm going straight. I'm through with you and the mob. Oh, it's too bad you feel that way about our happy little group, Harry, because the fellas ain't through with you. We like you, Harry. Oh, hey, Harry, don't stop. Hey, keep polishing that silverware. We hate to swipe tarnished stuff. I'm not swiping anything. You don't have to, Harry. I'll ring the boys to bring around the truck and relieve you of all the physical labor it has. You can't do it, Butch. Mrs. Pruitt, trust me. Oh, that's just super, Harry. There's so many guys around that people don't trust. It gives us crooks a bad name. See you later, Chief. I'm afraid having you and your friend for dinner, it's, it's, it's out of the question. Why, you don't know any of my guests? Oh, well, that's all right, Mrs. Pruitt. Me and Ruby get acquainted real easy. Maisie, Maisie, I just come from the kitchen. Well, that's nice, Ruby. What's cooking? Gossip. All the pots and pans are gone. Uh, gone? Stolen. All the silverware, the jewelry, even the butler. Well, that's impossible. Well, yeah. Who'd want to steal a butler? Oh, I guess the DA was right, Daisy. Once a crook, always a crook. Are you trying to tell me that dear boy Johnson is a thief? Why, Miss Revere, I... I thought you told me you were his agent. Yeah, but we just get 10% of his buttering jobs. We got no deal on the stuff he swipes. Well, well then, Mr. Zer, I, I believe this is a matter for the police. Exactly, Mrs. Brewer. And who are you? Gosh, the DA. And he's got Johnson with him. Uh, dinner will be ready in a few moments, madam. Ah, oh, well, you can't get out of this one, Harry. The only serving you're going to do ain't going to be in this house. It'll be in a much bigger one. Gosh, Harry, I'm ashamed of you. Losing us a good dinner. Couldn't you go straight? Uh, but he did go straight. Rather than let his former partners in crime ransack Mrs. Pruitt's home, he beat them to it and delivered all the swag and the members of the gang to my office. I uh, knew it. I knew it. Uh, oh, that does make a difference. Johnson, you may consider yourself hired. And you get $50 a week. Yes, madam. Uh, will that be all? Well, ain't 50 enough? <laughs> you know, Maisie, I, uh, I'm awful grateful to you for all you've done. Is there anything I can possibly do to show my gratitude? Well, um, yes, there is, Harry. After you get your first week's salary, will you pay back the nine bucks and 36 cents you swiped from me? <laughs> In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie.
once again, here's Maisie. Well, I played a hunch and made it the hard way. A man with a past became a man with a future. Of course, this Pruitt wants Harry Johnson when he makes like a butler. Always to serve from the left and remove the dishes from the right. But I always say it's better to work for a boss that's superstitious than for nobody at all. Yep. For a while there, my little white lie made things look mighty black. But the way I look at it, there's always a way to make a good guy out of a bad guy. Well, i got to get back to the dance hall for my evening's wrestling bout with music. Gosh, if they ever gave any awards for active service in the taxi dancing racket, my feet would get the purple heart. <laughs> Just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Elvia Allman, Gerald Moore, Lorene Tuttle, Peter Leeds, and Frank Nelson. Jack McCoy speaking. (laughs) 